Hey, 42 here. Do you write cursively, with beautifully flowing looped letters, or do you print? Actually, a more pressing question would be, do you write at all? Can you remember the last time you put pen to paper instead of finger to keyboard? Don't worry, you're not alone. The statistics show that every year, more and more people are rapidly forgoing penmanship altogether in favour of typing, even for small written tasks such as shopping lists or reminders on sticky notes. Most of us have replaced these with apps. A recent British survey found that one third of adults hadn't written anything by hand in the past six months. I too am dangerously close to counting myself amongst their number. But I think that's a great shame. Furthermore, this trend is damaging to our intelligence as a species, as you will soon find out. The humble pen, the great bastion of written communication for over 5,000 years. The Sumerians created the first written communication in 3200 BC in Mesopotamia, when they carved out cuneiform script into stone. The foundations of Western freedoms, Magna Carta, was inked into sheepskin with beautiful Latin cursive at Runnymede in 1215. Then, in 1776, the Declaration of Independence was signed, written in a 17th century script called English Roundhand, which was then mostly superseded in the late 19th century by Spenserian script. You will have seen Spenserian script if you have ever seen what one could argue is a rather popular logo. This. Handwriting is a deep part of our culture, but today there is a concerted yet contentious effort by schools worldwide to move children away from the pen and in front of computer screens or in front of tablets, tapping away like little lemmings. The logic behind this is that these devices are what they will be using in the workplace anyway, so why get them accustomed to an antiquated writing system that may be of little to no use to their career? Well, I'll tell you why. Have you ever been amongst a large crowd of people, talking all at once, perhaps in a busy restaurant or a dinner party? Maybe you are thoroughly engaged in a conversation with somebody yourself, when all of a sudden, from the noisy static of the crowd around you, your brain picks out a single word or sentence, and you can hear it as clear as day, even from the other side of the room. It could be your name or a bit of gossip about somebody that you know. What just happened was that your brain's reticular activating system, RAS, activated. At all times, there are literally millions of bits of data in your surroundings, noises, smells, sights, and physical sensations. This is far too much for your little brain to comprehend. Multiple tests over the years have shown that our brains are only capable of focusing on a maximum of four different things at once. And even that is optimistic. Most of the time we focus on one to two things simultaneously. So how does our brain decide that which of the potentially millions of possible things to focus on are worth our current time and attention? Well, it employs a conductor. Sitting at the central base of the brain, the brain's doorway to sensory inputs, it acts like a filter. All the information around us is constantly knocking on the door of our brain for further processing. It is the job of the RAS to decide what to let in. When we put pen to paper, the RAS is activated. Because writing requires fine motor control and the majority of our focus. So our RAS can't help but prioritise whatever we are currently writing about as the most important processing job for our brain. Conversely, when text is typed, every keystroke is exactly the same. There is no difference in motor control between pressing the G key to the A key on a keyboard. Once proficient, our brains can type almost autonomously, without much conscious force at all. And so the RAS can just filter out a lot of the information that we are taking in whilst typing, a luxury that it just doesn't have whilst handwriting. A 2010 study confirmed this with children. When they were asked to write words such as spaceship by hand, the areas of the brain associated with learning lit up. When they typed the same words, their brain activity was a lot quieter.
as though someone had turned off the lights. Now put yourself in the hypothetical scenario of viewing a university lecture, and you must take notes so you can learn vital knowledge for an upcoming exam. You have a choice of either using a laptop or a simple notepad and pen to record your notes. Which would you choose? If you chose a laptop, then you are likely to do much worse on the exam. As researchers Pam Mueller from Princeton and Daniel Oppenheimer from California University found out in a 2014 study. A group of students were asked to watch five TED Talks in a lecture hall and take notes on them. Half of the students were given laptops with no internet connection to prevent some online distractions, and the other half were only given a pen and paper. After a 30 minute break, both groups were given a series of questions to answer based on the TED Talks they had just watched and taken notes on. The students who took longhand notes performed significantly better at answering the questions than the laptop note takers. Mueller and Oppenheimer think that this is because when we type notes, we usually copy whatever the lecturer is saying verbatim, without attempting to summarise it at all. However, because handwriting is too slow to write down every single word being spoken, we are forced to summarise the lecture's main points. In doing so, the brain spends much longer processing the information that it is taking in. Mueller and Oppenheimer refer to this process as encoding. Conversely, when we type the lecture notes word for word, we are using the laptop as external storage for our brain. Sure, we are hearing and recording every word with keystrokes, but because this semi-automatic process requires little actual thought or contemplation, our brain is not actually processing, encoding the information. It is merely entering through our ears, passing straight through our brains and into our fingertips. However, when notes are handwritten, because we must think about the meaning of what is being said in order to summarise it in a very short amount of time, a significantly higher amount of neural processing, or encoding, is required. And so, even though we are taking fewer notes overall, we remember the notes that we have written far, far better than when we type them. Furthermore, you are more likely to understand the meaning behind those notes afterwards instead of staring blankly at the 5,000 word document on your computer screen and wanting to hammer your head into the keyboard as you suddenly realise that you have no idea what any of it means. Interestingly, they repeated the study once more, but this time allowed both groups to reread and study their notes for some time after the lectures. It would make sense that if the laptop note takers could revise their word for word notes, then after doing so they would be able to remember much more of it. But astonishingly, this made little difference on their learning. The longhand note takers still did much better. It seems that the encoding process that the longhand note takers did when they first heard the information was invaluable for their long-term retention and understanding. But to me, there is one overwhelming reason that we should fight to keep handwriting alive. Because it can be absolutely beautiful. Calligraphy is an art form, and all those who practice it desire to reach such a level of mastery that they are invited to an exclusive society with a really cool and memorable name. The International Association of Master Penmen, Engrossers and Teachers of Handwriting. It may not be such a pretty name, but my god does it have a pretty logo. IAMPEF, as it is commonly shortened to, are an international organisation responsible for choosing master penmen. A master penman is a calligrapher who has reached a distinguished level of mastery in calligraphic arts. There are many stages to qualify as a master penman, but the final is that they must, rather aptly, create their own certificate. There are currently only 12 master penmen in the world, and they create beautiful works of art like these. Technology is amazing, 
And if we all abandoned it for the pen, then the modern world would grind to a halt. But I think it's really important that the art form of writing by hand is kept alive as we rush ceaselessly into a technological future. IMPEF is certainly grasping to keep the art of penmanship and all its history and culture well and alive, but 12 master penmen can only do so much. If we all just took a moment now and then to simply pen a letter to a friend, or if you're feeling more adventurous, try your hand at calligraphy. Then, collectively, we can preserve the very thing that built our world. Writing. I believe that the best way to get started with calligraphy is by joining Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in writing, art and calligraphy. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes on must know topics. So you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities and just do the work you love. There are literally hundreds of amazing calligraphy courses on Skillshare for you to get stuck into. But personally, I recommend you start off with pen and ink calligraphy, the art of the envelope. Compared to the competition, Skillshare is really affordable. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. And since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 500 people to use the promo link in the description will get their first two months for free to try it out completely risk free. Thanks for watching and thanks again for Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Be sure to click the link in the description if you want to start your journey to becoming a master penman.